Hi there, and welcome back to Wade's Workshop. As many of you know, I do like my watches and what have you, and I'm in the process of restoring uh, an old watch that I've had for, yeah, 25, maybe 30 years. Um, um, it's not worth a lot, but some sentimental value, and I'm going to repair it. To remove the hands from the watch, I need a pair of levers, or crowbars, so to speak. But obviously, as you can imagine, the hands are pushed onto a little tiny spindle on the, on the watch, and they need basically a little crowbar either side just to pry them off their little press bit. So today, we're going to be making some extremely small crowbars. I'll show you how I went about making these. So a piece of quarter-inch brass up in the chuck. I probably should put my lathe in high gear for this small diameter stuff. In the uh, 100 to, uh, to 2,500 RPM range. But as I'm only doing a little bit, I'm not too worried. So, give me some zero on the end. I'm looking for 2mm diameter over 15. So I'll just skim back. Here. Oops. <laughs> Not paying any attention to my DRO, I'm just looking at it. Got a quick measure. I reckon we're two and a half plus there. Uh, oh, 3.3 .3 mil. There we go. That should be about two and a half. Again, a little bit of deflection here. Because it's such a small diameter over a length like that, pushing away from my tool. And just fine hand feed along here. I mean, it's not critical, this. It's just uh, the basis of the uh, action end, shall we call it. See where that is. Two point zero five. That won't come out in the polish. So from the back of there, I want to angle it out. I've got my compound set at twenty degrees. We don't want to leave a sharp corner with such a thin diameter. It's just like you just snap off. So give it a little bit more strength in that little area of the intersection. I'll just put a 20 degree angle up there. Should take my tailstock out of the way for this really, but... Just visually got the tool into the intersection between the parallel and the taper. Just 
stretching the limit of what my naked eyes can see. And there's our starting point. So we'll pull it out in the chuck a bit now. I just want to true up a diameter here somewhere. Again, stuck out quite a long way. It's slowing a bit. And I pulled it out further in the chuck, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to chew up a diameter on here, ready to stick a nail on the on the far end. I may have to pull it out a bit further again. Okay. So we've got the nailing tool up now. Just get the wheels in contact. Fine nail. Just a little bit of finger gripping is all I'm looking for here. We'll have a dribble of oil on there, I think. Not looking for a deep nail here. And I know this uh, thin rod will be deflecting away from this horrendous knurling tool. Back of four few passes. Quick shifty. I think that'll do for what I want. So that's the nail done. So 45 degree tool. Just skim this major diameter down, maybe half mil aside, remove a bit of the nurl, I think we'll go back to about props there, we'll get a dreadful deflection. tell the deflection is there because it's uh, it's cutting quite considerably on the back pass as well in fact I think what I'll do is just drop that back in the chuck up to there somewhere that'll remove some of the deflection and that Corbin inch made all the difference. Right, a little bit of emery cloth, a little bit of 240 grit, speed things up a bit. Just blend a bit of a radius on the top of there. Just it up a touch. Finish is fairly good, but uh, what do they say? If you can't make it right, make it bright. <laughs> For the seconds it takes to put a bit of a shine on it, a bit of scotch right there. Just blend those transitions a little bit. And then very carefully. A little bit of paper polish. Make it all nice and shiny. Okay, I think we need to part that off next. So up with the parting tool. Thirteen hundred might be a bit fast for parting that. Uh, I don't know. Thousand RPM. Off she comes. 
So we'll remove that from the chuck. Oh, come out. <laughs> we'll put the little part back in. I'll just swap the tools over. I'll do this in, we'll do this in real time. I won't bother cutting in here. Back up with me tool post. Just face the back edge off. And we'll turn back, I think, a little area. In fact, I think I'll put the V2 up for this. So that we've got a 45 degree lead into the mill. That looks more like a 45. Let's touch off there. Uh, two or three mils, something like that. And the chopper on the end. Uh, I think we'll just. A little tickle up with a needle file. Just blend that radius in. And I think we have it. And as if by magic, there's another one. <laughs> So these are the basic levers. We now have to do the doctoring on the end to turn them into a lever or a crowbar, shall we call them. The world's smallest crowbars. Crowbars for borrowers. <laughs> so we're going to anneal the end of these levers. I got them in the drill. Old coffee cup full of water, blow lamp. And then I could just hold it in a pair of pliers. And I want to get the end not glowing, but hot, hot. And I'll see the colour change. Takes a bit of practice this. I've unneeled a lot of brass over the years. I'm only concerned about the last three, four millimetres on here. I don't think that was hot enough. You see it go a lot sort of purple colour. Of course the rest of the brass bar is acting as a great big heat sink and sucking the heat out of it. We'll give that a whirl. Oh. So now that we've annealed the brass, I've got an anvil here, which is just a piece of uh, high-speed steel in the vice. Uh, I 
and just starting to gradually flatten out the end. The handrail's on the move. <laughs> And it will, as I'm doing this, work hard and again. As you can see, it's spreading out into like a spoon shape. So I'll keep going. Not using any force at all on this. And I think at that point, it's ready for a second anneal. So I'll anneal them again, the pair of them. I'll flatten the other one out and I'll anneal the pair of them again and then I want to thin them out until I'm yeah, about a millimetre thick of thickness on the ends. Maybe a little bit thinner um, but I can always always file both sides afterwards but I want to get the width um, on the end of the point is what I'm aiming at. So that's why I'm not just filing two flats on it. I want to keep get the width of the end of it. So I'll just anneal them and come back. So I've annealed the pair of them again. And immediately I can see them fanning out quite considerably. I think that's about it for that one. Now, if you don't anneal them enough when you're doing this, you'll see, I think that's me, my hammer mark there actually, but uh, what will happen is you'll start to get cracks appearing and then they'll be no good to you. So, just planishing this off now. And there we have it. The one's come out slightly better than the other, but there's not much in it. So the rest of the procedure now is going to be basically filing them into the thickness that I want by draw filing top and bottom. I'll just tidy up the edges to make them a smooth chamfer and then we'll look at putting the V in the middle. Just give myself a couple of flat sides on here with a needle file we'll be polishing all this up afterwards because the last thing we want I'll just uh, do the most of it here with a file with a larger file. the top of that flat <coughs> you can see it's coming along It seems to be swollen more, a little bit more on one side than the other, this one. It's 
better. Okay, so having got to that stage, I need a slit down the center, which is it going to enable them to fit either side when I come in under the hands, either side of the spindles that the hands fit on. Well, I thought this would be a giggle. Set the part up level in the uh, three jaw chuck. Send to the grinding wheel. Uh, okay. That's about it. That'll do nicely. <laughs> I've dressed them all up, and the last little job I've re annealed them, and as you can see, I've put the little bend on. So now I did give them a quick polish on both sides before I flattened it so now I just got to polish it up and that's job done well there we are there's the finished articles um, I did widen out the slot just slightly on the end um, as you can see they are a, a prying lever I mean they haven't got to pry a great distance I put a pound coin there just for a bit of a a bit of scale but yeah they're going to sit quite nicely in the hand I can um, sort of hold them in that sort of fashion when I'm uh, praying the hands off so yeah delicate gentle little parts um, bit fiddly on the end just to, but because that's a sort of handwork so to speak um, to get the shape you want on the end um, you know the shape and, and form the rest of it was just turning but yeah happy with those they're gonna go into my watch repair toolkit well, there we are. That's the two little uh, crowbars finished. May I take this opportunity to say once again, thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for subscribing. We'll see you all soon. Cheers now.